This is math point nine exponents, radicals, polynomials, and algebraic expressions. You used to need to know all of these exponent properties, but you don't really need to know them for the current digital SAT. And I'll explain why later, but I've mentioned it, kind of mentioned it in the previous few math points. If you have exponent and you are multiplying where the base numbers are the same, so like three to the second power times three to the fourth power or something, then the result is b, the base, uh, to the x plus y power. So you're keeping the base and the power are adding them together if you're multiplying them here. If you're dividing or if you have like fractions, then you would be subtracting the exponents. So this is x minus y power. If you have a negative power at the top, then this would be the number without the minus, so b to the rth r power, but then putting that as 1 over b to the rth power. So negative r is like a fraction, like 1 over b to the r. If you have b to the p power, then the whole thing times, uh, the whole thing to the q power, then you would have multiplication of the exponents. So that would be b to the p q power and b to the 0 power, anything to the 0 power is 1. Now if you look at this, which of the following is equivalent to this expression in your four expressions, you see this coming up a lot on the digital SAT. Um, a thing to keep in mind is even though, so this question doesn't have the um, exponent prop, doesn't use the exponent properties, but it covers the idea of having um, a variable and you have to find which one is equivalent. So these are these are the equivalent expressions question. You can solve the math way and the math way may be what is expected for the digital SAT but if you're not so good at math and if you need to remember everything and if you're not sure um, whether these exponent properties apply and how to use them um, or remember these different ones then maybe the quickest way is to use what I taught in the earlier math points, which is about plugging in, plugging in a random number. For example, this question doesn't tell you what x is and doesn't tell you what x has to be, but that means x can be anything. So if x can be anything, um, you might not want to put 0 for x because here you have 0 to the second power, which is 0, and so this is 0 minus 0. You end up with a bunch of zeros, so that doesn't really give you too much information. But if let's try x being 1, so if x is 1, then this becomes 2 times 1 times 1 to the second power, so that's 1, minus 3 times 1, which is just 3. And if you can't do this by in your head, feel free to type that into a calculator also. Type it into a decimal calculator. 2x times um, x squared minus 3x, but uh, putting 1 for the x. So this would end up being 2 times negative 2, so this would be negative 4. And then you look at the choices and see which one has the expression being equal to negative 4. Looking through them, this one gives you negative 4 times 1, which is just negative 4. So A works. Uh, but that doesn't mean A is necessarily the right answer. It could be luck that A happens to be the same, but if you change a different value for X, then the, the expression wouldn't be the same. Um, and B, you have 3 minus 1, so B is 2, so B is wrong, you know, right away. C, you have 2 minus 3, which is negative 1, so C is not it. And D, you have 2, this is 1, minus 6, this is 1, equals negative 2. So maybe it's A or D, so B and C are wrong. And then you can plug in another number. So maybe let's put in 2 next. So 2 times 2 times this would be 4. 2 to the second power is 4, minus 3 times 2, which is 6. So now you have 2 times 2, just 4, times negative 2, so that's negative 8. And if you can't do that by head, uh, in your head, then use a calculator. Then looking at the choices now, now x is 2, right? Here you have negative 4 times 2 to the second power. 2 to the second power is 4. Negative 4 times 4 is negative 16. And that's not negative 8, so maybe that tells you A is not the right answer. And you can go ahead and choose B. But just to show you, 2 to the third power is 8. So you have 2 times 8, 16. 
minus and x to the fourth power uh, x to the second power is four six times four is 24 and this indeed is negative eight so d is the right answer and if you want to do it the, the math way so if you know the math way then maybe this question would be faster to do it the math way uh, the math way would be to just distribute this to the different values here in the parentheses uh, in math in school you might learn uh, the drawing to look like this so this would be 2 to the x 2 so this would be 2x and so 2x times x to the second power so this is x to the second power minus 2x times 3x that's what you would end up with and so here x times x to the second power that's kind of like this same base multiplying two uh, exponential expressions you would end up with 2x to the uh, 2x to the third power here um, to the third power and minus 2x uh, 2 times 3 is 6 you multiply the numbers by the number with the number and you multiply the variable with the variable so x times x here you have x squared so here you have a 3 I'm going to put here and here you have a 2 that I'm going to put here and this is by just distributing you and you get d but if you don't remember distribution or all that um, math point the earlier math point math point three about plugging in numbers uh, that will work fine too okay so let's take a look at this question practice question we'll go over a few practice questions and we'll let you do the rest uh, by yourself and go over those with your classmate and your um, teacher which of the following is equivalent to the sum of this and this? So you're supposed to add them. And a property about adding um, these expressions is that you can add the terms with the same exponents, um, but you're adding only the numbers. So what that means is, if you look at 3x squared, x, 3x to the fourth power and 4x to the fourth power, they both have x to the fourth power. That means you can multiply them. Um, sometimes I'll tell students, if you see these different terms, you can think of this as a, uh, a thing, and then think of this as another thing. Uh, so as a thing, I'm going to say this is the, the red square, the red, red, red rectangle, x to the fourth power, and the blue rectangles are x to the third power. And the way to think of this in like uh, your common English is if you have three red rectangle, and your sum is adding them. And then you're adding three rectangles. With, um, you're getting four more red rectangles. And how many red rectangles do you have? You have seven red rectangles. So this would end up, you end up with four red rectangles. And what about the blue? Blue, you have two blue and seven blue. So you end up with nine blue. This would give you four red and nine blue. So you're looking for that. And among the choices, oh, uh, sorry, this is seven. Yeah. So three plus four is seven. And then two plus seven is nine. So seven red rectangle. And a red rectangle is x to the fourth power. Okay, so it's not this one because this eight, uh, x to the eighth power is not a red rectangle. But here we have a rectangle being x to the fourth power. So this is the, um, I can just use the rectangles here. Choice D, this is the rect rectang rect red rectangle. And choice D here, this is the blue rectangle. So the answer is D here. And if you don't remember the properties, then the fallback method is you plug in numbers again. So a simple number might not be zero because you quick glance, hopefully you can see that they all end up being uh, zeros. But if x is one, then you have three times one. So three plus two and four plus seven. So the original equation will get you three plus two and a four plus seven. And that gets you 16. Looking at the choices, A gets you 16, B gets you 16, C doesn't, it's 26, and D gets you 16, so you can cross out C. Then you plug in another term for X. Let's say X is now 2. You plug in that on the calculator. Um, don't do it by hand. On the calculator, calculate that. And as you do that, you'll find out that the expression doesn't equal to A and B. 
but it does equal to D always, so D is the right answer. So you can do that, the plug-in calculator method by yourself. Which of the following is equivalent to this? And same idea, maybe you can do it the math way, which is by distributing the term into different things, or you can do it with a calculator. And here I'm going to do a demo with a calculator. Okay, let's open up a decimals calculator to see how calculator works in action. Which of the following is equivalent to this? And what you can do is you can type in the equation 2x minus 1 times x to the third power plus x to the second power minus x plus 1. So you have this. This equation looks like this. And you don't know which one it is, so let's try to see if it is a. a is 2x to the fourth power plus x to the third power minus 3x to the second power minus x plus 1. And a doesn't look like this, so a is not the right answer. Now b has most of this, so I'm going to copy this. It's going to be faster. I'm going to copy that over here. This is b. Uh, instead of a minus x, I have a plus 3x here, and that's also not it. Oh, it's minus 1 here, minus 1. Oh, hey, and that is it. The red line and the green line are the same, so the answer is B. And if you do it the math way, then maybe for this question, the math way will take a little bit longer. The math way will be distributing, so you will end up with 2x. You have to do 2x times x to the third power. That's So you'll write down on your scrap paper 2x to the uh, fourth power, you write that down. And then the next part is 2x times x to the second power. So that is 2x to the fourth power plus 2x to the third power. And then minus 2x to the second power and then uh, plus 2x, then minus 1, negative 1 times x to the third power, so that's minus x to the third power, and so on and so forth. To continue this with the minus 1 term for x to the third power and, and so on, then you combine the like terms, you end up with b. And that's the, the way that uh, SAT originally wants you to do this question. But you don't need to do that. Um, you can use it with a do it with a calculator, um, or if you like the plug in the number way, you can also do that. You plug in a number for x, so pretend that x is 0. You type in 0 here. 2 times uh, 0 minus 1, and then x is 0 here, and this x is 0 here, and this x is 0 here, and you end up with negative 1. Then you plug in that for the other ones and see if they all uh, end up with with uh, zeros. So so that's one way, or end up with negative one. That's one way to do it. And then uh, just to show you the different ways of doing these questions, you can um, also have a, instead of typing in um, x, you can type in another variable, say like b. And you can add a slider for b. So this will show you um, what what value for, for b is. So this wouldn't show up in the graph. It will show you what, uh, if you have b equals negative 5, then this equals to this. Uh, and you can do the same for these equations. Type those equations here and change the b value and see if they equal to um, the, the number here. So 2x, I'm going to do, do that here. b to the fourth power plus x to uh, b to the third power minus 3b to the second power plus 3b minus 1. Okay. And notice if I move the slider for the value for b, then this number and this number are always the same. So that tells you that they're the same line, so the answer is b. Okay, We'll do maybe uh, one more, which of the expression is equivalent to this. And you can combine, distribute this, combine the like terms, and end up with something like this. So there's one, uh, remember, we we're talking about different color rectangles earlier. So you can think of r to the third power here as a, a kind of rectangle. 
um, Q to the second power here is another kind of rectangle. Remember that the rectangles mean they're different um, but base numbers or they have different exponents. So here you have a R to the third power and R and just R to the first power. Those are different uh, rectangles. You wouldn't combine them. So, um, so here, yeah, and so this R would just be a another color rectangle. Let's say um, a purple rectangle. We can solve it algebraically, or if you um, plug in a number that you like, that you think of for Q and R, and um, maybe type that into the calculator, then you can solve that. So I'll, I'll let you do the math calculation by yourself, but hopefully you know how to do this question. And these are all questions of equivalent expressions, questions, which the following is equivalent to the equation, to the expression above, so see if this equals to that. And you can do it the, the math way, combining like terms, putting them together, see if it equals to this, that's method one. Maybe I should write that down. There are a few ways to do it. One is by the math way, and that's combining, combining, like terms or um, solve math and combine like terms that's the math way to do it and the second way is you can do substitute in a number and check you substitute in one for x and then two for x and see which one uh, works all the time and which ones don't work the, the ones don't work you cross them out and then the third one is to graph with a decimals these are the three ways to solve these questions so i'll perhaps leave that to you to solve these questions i think they're all very similar and if you are not sure how to do them then perhaps you should do practice for all of these questions if you think they're pretty easy and you're getting a hang of it then you obviously don't need to do all the questions here and then we move on to the second, a second point here. It's about prime factorization. And for the old, old SAT, you used to need to know how to factor numbers like 36 squared so that you can um, get the right answer. But for the new SAT, you really don't need to know that much math. And you can solve this question without knowing how to factor, for example, 16 into different um, prime factors. And because uh, I want you guys to be able to get as high of a score as quickly as possible, I don't think I'll be going into that much math, but just the calculator trick or the, the math trick on getting the answer without learning how to do prime factorization. Um, if you are um, the, the math kind of person who really wants to know how to do prime factorization, then I'll do it here very quickly. Two times um, you would factor this into different uh, into smaller factors. So 36 is 6 times 6, and 6 is 2 times 3. So is this 6 is also 2 times 3. Then I can combine the similar ones and make that look like this. 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 to the second power. And this equals to 2 to the second power times 3 to the second power, second power and second power, but I should make, just to make it simple, I'm gonna make this blue, uh, but this purple is just showing that there are these two, uh, these two here and these, it's purple. So this two means there are two twos here, and this two here means there are two threes here. And it's this whole thing to the blue, second power so with the the um, exponent calculation that we learned above then this becomes two to the fourth power times three to the fourth power so that's the the math way to do it but if you don't want to do that then just forget what i just said and use a calculator to calculate this which of the following expression is equivalent to this you can type in a number for x or you can use a calculator and here Maybe the calculator method is newer for you, so I'm going to do it the math way for you, the calculator way for you to see it. 2 to the 3x power 
and we don't know which one the answer is, but we have a calculator. So I'm going to type that in here and I'm going to zoom in here and see that they are, they look very similar, but they're different. They don't overlap completely. So A is wrong. 2 to the 3x plus 4 power. Why is that the same color? Uh, okay, it's the same color, but this looks like it's the same line here. So B is the right answer. And just to show you the rest for now, this is a different line. And 32 to the 3x power is also a different line. So the answer is B. Radicals. You used to need to know how to solve this by uh, factoring out the, top, the, um, the numbers inside and end up with a number without the radicals. But with a calculator, uh, you can kind of like cheat without uh, legally cheating. That's what I would say. That expression, you have a square root of 9x squared. And that looks like this V shape here. Now choice A is 3 x that doesn't look like a v shape 3x squared doesn't look like that v shape and oh um i missed something here uh, 18x doesn't look like that v shape i'll explain what i missed 18x to the fourth power doesn't look like that v shape because i missed a detail in the question if x is greater than zero so if x is greater than zero that means we're only looking at in the graph the part where x is greater than zero uh, and if you're not sure what that mean is, you can type that in here. So we're only looking at the blue part to see if this expression is the same as the rest. And if you recall earlier when we were doing a that part, this part, both lines overlap completely. You see the red and the purple. So the answer here is choice A. Make sure you read the question carefully because otherwise you're going to miss a detail like what I just did and perhaps get a wrong answer if one of the choices has like the other half and, and that's somehow the, the right, the trick choice. Okay, and these questions, which of the following is equivalent, so it's just type that into a calculator and then you type these into a calculator and see if they match, same here, uh, and uh, you can do the rest. Which, the following, which value of x satisfy the equation above? So now you're not given the choices. How do you solve this? Take a guess. Um, I guess the, the, the hint is there's one keyword for the hint or for the strategy to solve this question. And the answer is decimals. Type that equation into a decimals calculator equals 11. You end up with, let me remove this line here, with this vertical line. Um, what value of x satisfy the equation above? Meaning that it's the x-intercept here. And so here you see that this is, um, maybe it's pretty obvious that this number here says 117. And you can give it a try. Square root of 117 being x plus 4, that equals to 11. So the answer is... 117. Without knowing math, without knowing how to solve for uh, square roots, you can get the answer right away. All right, I think that's enough background knowledge for you to solve these questions. So we're going to move on to algebraic expressions. On the SAT, you see questions like this, where in the question, there are a lot of different variables. In this case, there are v and r squared, uh, r. Pi is not a variable, so it's just v and r. But perhaps with the pi here and everything, they may look quite confusing on the um, on first glance. But it's actually pretty simple. And this requires maybe like a little bit of math knowledge, but if you don't have that, it might be still fine too. It basically asks you which of the following gives you the, the radius of the sphere. So it asks you which of the following gives you the radius of the sphere, where r is the radius. So it says, which of the following is r? What is r equal to in terms of the volume of the sphere? And you have the volume of the sphere. So it's basically asking you, if you have this, then r equals to what? What's another way to write this expression? 
And the math way to do it is that you need to isolate the R cube. So you kind of like need to move everything to the other side. So you're starting off with V equals, um, this is four over three, pi times R cube. This is four over three, pi R cube. And in order to move everything to the other side, I need to first multiply 3 over 4 on both sides so that this fraction disappears. And that means I'll end up with no fraction here, but a fraction on the other side because this becomes uh, 1 over 1 on the right side where it gets cancelled. So here I have that, 3 over 4 v. Uh, here I have pi r cubed, and I want to move the pi to the other side also, so I divide pi on both sides. Divide by pi, divide by pi, now here I end up with a pi at the bottom. And I want to get the just r, not uh, r to the third power, so I'm going to do a cube root on both sides. So this is cube root on both sides. And by doing that, this 3 and this uh, radical sign and this 3 disappears. I end up with this, and the answer is this. So looking at the choices, the answer is. D. Okay. And if you don't know how to do that, then that's also fine. Um, just do it the uh, a, a plug and check way. If you don't know what V is, if you don't know what R is, let's plug in a number. And say if you have complete no idea on like what number to plug in. Let's say 1. Okay, So 1, let's say we put in 1 for V. We end up with 1 equals 4 over 3 pi R cube. Slider do. Doesn't do anything. Okay. Um, but I want to put x here because then that gives me the value for what this uh, r equals to. And here I see that the intersection is the intersection is one uh, point six something. That's where the intersection of this graph is. Now uh, I plug. 1, since I plug in 1 for v, I'm going to plug in 1 for the v's here also. So for a, I have 4 pi over 3 times 1. Okay, and this gives me that number, and that number isn't this number. But if I plug in for d, d I have the... Can I do that? Yeah, I can do that. The, the, the shorthand is cube root, c-b-r-t. I can also do 3... No, nope, you can't do it. Okay, so it's cube root of that. I think there's a keyboard here, uh, keyboard option here. Um, if you do, let's see, three that. Oh no, that doesn't work. Um, I guess you just have to know it. It's cube C B root. And here you have three V, and we said V is one over. Or pi. And this value is kind of like this. If I make x equals uh, 0 0.620350 and so on. Can I do that? I'm going to make that b. And I need to make that x. Okay. I forgot I can just hover my mouse over this point here. If it doesn't show me my intersection, I'm going to draw a line there. So the line there is y equals to 0. And I can hover my mouse over here on this point, And I see that the value is uh, 0.62-ish. And that's the answer. Um, on the SAT, it's not going to give you numbers that are very close, so you won't have, for example, choice D being this, and then choice C being 0 0.62, like 1, 9, or something. So, the answer is D. And I'll leave these practice questions to you, too. Uh, then, after you're done and checking over those, go ahead and move on to these 
classwork questions as well as the homework questions. And if you have any questions, as always, just ask. I'll see you in the next math point. Bye.